It's a seemingly simple formula. The more you work, the more money you make. But that's not always the case in the U.S., since some salaried employees don't qualify for overtime protections. Starting July 1st, though, the Labor Department is expanding those protections, making overtime available to more workers. Here to explain the changes is Dr. Bob Badowski, chair of the School of Business at Westminster College. Thanks for taking the time to join us tonight. Thank you for having me. So let's start first with what workers are covered right now by overtime protections. Sure. So hourly workers are covered currently, and those people who are currently not making 35500 ish um, or that's the cutoff. So at that point, or if you are an hourly worker, if you work over 40 hours, uh, you are qualified for overtime pay, which is time and a half. So let's get to this new uh, update. What additional workers will fall under the expansion come July? So they're raising that that kind of criteria of about $8,000 up to $43,888. So that's going to take those folks who are earning somewhere in the 35 to or somewhere about 44,000 um, into an area where they can start to earn overtime pay if they work over 40 hours a week. How much of the workforce do you think this will apply to? I think it'll apply to a pretty good deal of the workforce. You know, being a being a college professor and a lot of our students who are graduating and going out and getting jobs. Um, that's where their salaries lie in, in some certain cases. So I think those kind of starting people who are going to be uh, out in that hourly, but uh, salaried workers are really going to see um, kind of an uptick. So either their companies are going to have to start raising their their salaries to meet that lower or that higher quota or they're going to start to have to pay overtime. So I guess a lot of calculations are going to be happening um, when this kicks in. Right. Do we know how this will change things? Will salaried employees have to start clocking in or keeping track of their overtime? Is that laid out yet? Um, I don't think that's necessarily laid out in particular businesses, but that would make the most sense. Um, you know, you would have to definitely keep track of those hours because if you're going to claim more than 40 hours and earn overtime pay, based on that, there has to be some sort of mechanism in order to um, count it. And are there guidelines for how an employer should determine what a salaried worker's hour is worth? Not necessarily. Most employers, you know, kind of work within the confines of whatever type of business they're in. Um, you know as well as I do, salaries range wildly um, between different types of careers and even within different types of organizations, depending on what kind of position you hold. So I don't think there's really a, a standard as of yet. Um, each company and each industry is going to have to look at it individually and try to figure out what works best for them. Right. Finally, are there any concerns that companies having to pay out more how this might affect the broader economy through layoffs or otherwise? Well, that's always a major concern, whether we're talking about raising minimum wage or raising, you know, this this different standard. Um, something has to happen. Now, the, the companies normally are not going to take a big hit on these things. Uh, it's either going to show up in the cost of things that they're they're making, producing, manufacturing, or um, maybe they're going to start shrinking the workforce a little bit, depending on if, if they can do that or not. So there's always that side of things, um, you know, whether the prices go up and they, they lose some labor or somewhere in between those things, uh, we'll probably start to see a little bit of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Dr. Bob Badowski, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.